Hello everybody, welcome. It's uh, Zal here from Geek Paradise Entertainment and I'm joined again by Bashar. Say hi. Hello. And we are back after a long break with finally the mid-season premieres of the Arrowverse shows and we're back here to discuss them with you. Um, it's it's actually missing one of the shows because it's th it doesn't start yet. Legends of Tomorrow doesn't start until next month because um, Black Lightning took its uh, spot and that started this week too but we're not going to be talking about it. Alright, so let's start with talking about Supergirl which last time uh, when we saw it we saw Supergirl and Rain fight and Rain beat the crap out of Supergirl and put her in a coma and yep. this episode started with her still in the coma and um, surprisingly you know they left her in the coma for most of the episode which was nice to see like um, the story from everyone else's perspective like we saw the new Legion of Superheroes trying to help with that Brainiac, Brainiac 5 I guess his name was Brainy he was oh, mentally okay, so yes, trying to he, help he, her he, yeah he's the nice Brainiac yeah he's as the nice opposed to like the, as opposed to you know the normal Brainiacs we get who tend to be giant douches yeah he's the nice Brainiac and he was trying to help wh um, which was cool seeing him trying to help her mentally by being in her in her apartment in her mind or whatever like her her mental comfort space um, and while he was doing that um, Monel and his chick were trying to like figure out if it was okay to interfere and help or not which I felt was kind of drawn out a little bit like they could have realized oh hey maybe we should help earlier in the episode um, but whatever it was done for dramatic timing I guess um, mm -hmm. and yeah and then some some awkward stuff between Lena Luther and uh, Jimmy Olsen and which uh, is intentionally awkward because yeah. as we can remember it's only awkward if you make it awkward and they are making it awkward on purpose and it's really good. yeah because Jimmy Olsen is trying to hide Supergirl's secret but she thinks it's because of her but Lena Luther thinks it's because of her name being Luther and and then they make this a big deal and she's like oh well I don't want us to be awkward because you and Kara used to date and he's like it's really okay and then she's still in a coma and she has to talk to Kara so John Jones pretends to be Kara and he has to sit through that horrible conversation which was extremely yeah, funny <laughs> and, and while he's sick while he was sick yeah. uh, I'll bet they are never going to let him go for that no, that was that was actually like pretty funny, um, <laughs> especially his reaction afterwards. But um, and uh, his voice and her body—that's what makes it even funny. So funny, yeah. And then the end of the episode, um, uh, we saw Kara come out of her coma because, you know, sh that was the perfect timing for her to come out of the coma because Rain was attacking uh, this one place. So her thing, so let's talk about her for a second before we talk about that. So her thing this episode was she needs to cleanse sin from the world. She's trying to go after criminals, but she's she's killing them from what I can tell. And she's also trying to go after people who have kept a system of corruption going, which is, you know, like the justice system and, um, you know, like the government and stuff. So she's trying to go after not just the criminals, but like everyone else too. Because <coughs> she believes like that they're all contributing to the society of of sinners or whatever. So what? So basically, like a like a Kryptonian Punisher. Kind of, yeah, like a Kryptonian Punisher that has no business <laughs> trying to punish anybody after what she did. But yeah, um, <laughs> not only but but not only but she's doing Supergirl's job in a more permanent way. So the city was already being cleansed before she came and started taking over. Yeah, it's Which like Batman like, and uh, Red Hood. It's like the contrast between Batman and Red Hood, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, but it, it's the kind of contrast where you feel like at the end of the day, you guys are just exchanging places or you're wasting time. You know? Only one, per except one person has different MO, and even then, it's like you're going and you're doing the same, the same job as the older person in a different way. So your objective was already being accomplished in both cases. What's the point? Yeah, I guess she just didn't like the way Supergirl was doing it, <laughs> because she yeah, wasn't she, killing anybody. Yeah, the thing is, she didn't know, 
it's not really her who's making the decisions. It's just somebody telling her it is your destiny and all that nonsense. Yeah, and what's Which, interesting you know, is, I, I always take it with like uh, that whole destiny. Sh- like, yeah, but what is, what's interesting here is that like it doesn't seem like Samantha remembers anything that Rain does. Um, yeah. Because we saw Which that scene of her, to it. yeah, we saw that scene of her playing with her daughter in the, earlier in the episode, and then she saw the thing about rain in the newspaper, and kind of had a reaction to it, but not, you know, not a, not an expected reaction. Kind of like, mm. oh, I think I did this, but I'm not sure, <laughs> or or something like that, something of a shocked reaction. So yeah. Yeah, and then also that weird religious guy was playing a big part in the episode. The guy from the Church of Rao. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, at the end of the episode revealed that he's also part of a super villain team up, apparently. Well, not really a team up, he's kind of helping Rain out. More like a cult. Yeah, he's part of the super villain cult. Towards the end of the episode, uh, Supergirl wakes up after the DEO's failed attempt to take down Rain um, using a kryptonite chain or whatever they had like a chain with some kryptonite on it they realized they needed to put that kryptonite right in her bloodstream so at the end they had the team with Monel and his chick from the future try and go and um and administer that syringe to her but they couldn't do it and supergirl came in at the last minute and kind of helped them out and injected her with kryptonite but she was still able to fly away and get to safety somehow and yeah so that thing was kind of useless yeah and they later that. showed that it didn't really take that much of an effect on her which i feel like they'll explain unless it because they acknowledge unless that it plays like a big role in the future then yeah they they took time to focus on it happening so i feel like they'll explain it in the future but um yeah other otherwise um it seems like right now, uh, Supergirl's back. They don't really have a way to take down Rain yet. And the crazy religious guy has joined their cult. So, no clue what's going to happen from here. I, uh, I felt like it was a good mid season premiere, you know, come back and set things up for the rest of the season. Uh, how did you feel about it? Same thing, like, uh, but that whole thing with the injection at the end, un- if it, unless it's. Unless it plays a role in the future, I felt it was a complete waste of energy, because that didn't do anything at all. Well, they didn't know that, you know, they were trying to do something to stop her. And they thought, oh, crazy Kryptonian, this is what stops them. So so what's your opinion about it being a mid-season premiere? Again, like you said, it's a good mid-season premiere because it continues what was brought on before and sets up the rest of the season. So, let's move on to The Flash. Um... The Flash had a pretty interesting episode with a very nice ending that had uh, some nice contrast. So basically this was the Trial of the Flash episode, like in the title, of course, there was a trial for Barry Allen. Because in the last episode, the mid-season finale, we saw that he was being framed for killing Clifford DeVoe. But as we all know, Clifford DeVoe switched consciousness with Dominic and that that telepath that uh, Killer Frost was operating on last episode. They switch consciousness, and he, um, and he basically put Dominic's consciousness into his old body, and killed him, and made it look like Barry Allen killed him. And he's now in Dominic's body with this, with these telepath powers, and that was even made more clear this episode. Like they made that a point to hammer into us that like he has his telepathic powers, and that's the reason he was able to switch consciousness with him. So maybe that shoots down the theory that he wants to take over Barry's body, because since Barry doesn't have telepathic powers, he probably won't be able to. But anyway, um... I have a theory regarding DeVoe and his objective. I think he might eventually want to get Flash's body at some point, because of the regeneration thing. But it does make sense, because his abilities, I think, can carry over from body to body. He had... Brilliant mind in the first body, and he carries over with him in the second body, which was telekinesis. So, with the third body, we're talking super genius telekinesis or and uh, freaking super speed and super healing. So, and that's not godlike powers, that's pretty close to it. So, his, his power that he carried over to Dominic's 
uh, body was pretty much his consciousness. His like, consciousness, but also like his his brilliant intellect, because that's right. that's, uh, but that's this, his power. But isn't that part of his consciousness? I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, we can't really say the specifics of what happened when he switched bodies because they don't even know. They just are like, yeah, he just switched bodies. Um, now he's inside his mind and shit, and he's still a smart. He still has the same powers. But I don't know if that would really imply or mean that he would be able to carry over telekinesis because that's not part of his consciousness. That's part of Dominic's body. Like that's a physical trait that Dominic has. But I guess mental things are physical too. But I don't know. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can see your point. I can see what you mean. It's a theory. It's yeah. a theory. Like, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. I can see them possibly doing something like that because, yeah, um, they don't really care about the rules they set up for their universe or really make up rules in the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, we're looking at you, season three. Yeah, seriously. So yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Um, but other than that, uh, but yeah, so. Um, so we have this trial happening, and we see what we saw in the preview of, you know, Cecile telling him it's possible that the best option he has is to reveal that he's the Flash, and... Which is, a, which is a bad idea. It's a terrible idea, yeah. And we have, because Barry makes a good point, like, they'll be coming after not only Iris, but everybody that the Barry's associated with is, is gonna be targeted by villains. And that's exactly. his weakness, like he said, like, they would know my weakness if they knew my secret identity. Um, so yeah, good call that they didn't reveal that. <coughs> um, and also, we saw different people giving different, you know, testimonies for him, like Captain Siggins giving a decent testimony about the prosecutor still being an ass. And yeah, we well saw... The prosecutor made some... It was, a, was a good prosecutor, like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, he did his job. Well. Yeah. Also, they bungled the end. It's like, oh, I'm still innocent. Okay, well, in the face of all this evidence, you're not innocent. I'm sorry. Right, yeah, it's well, like... Strange, but, like, it's just... That end was badly managed. If anything, that last part was the nail in the cup. The proverbial cup. Yeah, like, they tried a bunch of different things, and even Joe and, um... What's his name? Um, Ralph got that evidence about her cheating. Yeah. You know, like, quote-unquote, cheating on her husband with Dominic because nobody knows that he switched bodies. But then she was still doing her act, being like, also oh. That's the, uh, also, that thing in the courtroom with Barry and Iris, that was really assfully. I mean, yeah, but it was a, it was kind of a, it was like a, it was an okay moment. I didn't think it was that mm. bad. Um, I, like, for I, like I a moment bad. between it, them. It, it, it wasn't was bad, but it, it wasn't bad, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still an asshole. But yeah, then right. again, are him. you expecting anything else from this show? Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, come on, at this point, that's, uh, out of everything that he's done, that's like the most logical. <laughs> that's how bad it's yeah. been. That's how bad the show gets. Out of everything he's done, this has made the most sense. And it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I guess he could say he just made like a, like a temporal field, or some comic book bullshit like that, but I mean... It's fine. It was cool. It was cool visuals. It was a nice moment. Um, it was adorable in a way, but that's right. pretty much it. Yeah, nothing to really think about too much. If you really think about it too much, and he was just moving that fast, her face would be on fire for when he kissed her <laughs> from the friction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> her lips would have fallen clean off her body. <laughs> Minimum. But yeah, no, anyway... um so we saw that nothing in the courtroom really worked and he had to excuse himself at one point to contain that nuclear blast and then that led to the end of the episode having that nice contrast of Sigint honoring the flesh and the judge basically destroying Barry's life and sentencing him to life in prison um, which is pretty crazy right now like he has too much evidence against him and you know all of these things are piled up against him now he's legally in jail forever and it's like with no with no parole like so they can't even pull some money out of their ass and like get him out like they did with Oliver yeah, no, uh, there's no bail there's nothing well Oliver can still afford it uh, right you know but I'm just saying like at the time of the episode and the arrow um, you know in the show they had that grant money like Felicity and Curtis had just got that grant money which is what they used to bail Oliver out um, so you know 
it wasn't even something that could be done conveniently like that on the flash. They said no, he's going to jail and he's gonna stay in jail for at least a at, le at least a little while, which I'm okay with. That they uh, didn't solve the whole for problem. At for, for at least forever, by the looks of it, because again, there's no such thing called parole. Well, right, right. I mean, just on the show, obviously we know he's gonna be out of prison before the end of the season. That would be asinine if he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, conveniently, they put him in the same cell as his dad. Um, for more fields exactly but it's interesting because I like that they didn't resolve this in one episode you know like flashpoint and the first episode of the season where yeah, they brought Barry like back what, uh, and uh, what, what Arrow does excessively which is really irritating right which is still when we get to that Arrow still hasn't resolved its issues in one episode either so I guess they're learning on all the shows none of the shows resolve their issues in one episode which is nice I mean if you call Kara Denver's waking up from her coma resolving an issue then I guess that was done before the end of this episode but obviously they still have to deal with Rain and haven't figured out a weakness for her because she's the you know she's the main villain can't beat her yet still half a season left to go but I like that yeah. I like that they didn't figure out you know like Barry wasn't set free by the end of this episode like we'll definitely see yeah, that in, fact, it, in, fa in fact, it didn't even get better for him, it actually got a lot worse. Right, yeah, the judge was talking so much shit, he was like, you have no regard for human life, and this and that, and it's like, damn, he just saved, he literally just saved the whole city, probably half the country from a nuclear explosion. <laughs> exactly, uh, but the thing is, they never know, Right. They, ne they will never know. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the shitty part about that contrast in the end, it was like, the Flash is being honored for it, but Barry's going to jail <laughs> for yep. something he didn't do, which is pretty crazy. It was very nice the way they did it, like the direction of that scene was very nice, I enjoyed it. Um, but, so yeah, we still have to see how they resolve this, and next episode we'll probably see a scene with him, um, you know, in his, in his um, jail uniform and in Iron Heights on the phone with someone on the other side like when he was traveling back in time at the end of season one and he saw that scene pop up mm -hmm. we're, we're probably gonna get that scene next episode probably not the exact same scene cuz yeah. you know they're gonna probably like reshoot the scene cuz they're not gonna use a scene from three years ago <laughs> but also appar apparently Ralph gets a new outfit or something oh that'd be cool as we stand Barry's in prison and the team have tried things and there was a nice moment too in the episode where Joe was gonna try to plant evidence and Ralph you know kind of culminated this character development by being like you could do that and it sounds like a good idea now but when you get caught it's not gonna sound like such a good idea after all so you probably shouldn't do that anyway do whatever yeah, you want passive, very sarcastic passive aggressive right yeah he basically told him you know straight up like it'll feel good now ba and it'll feel yeah. good later when you feel like you got away with it, but when they find out and you get your shit taken away and you're fired and your life is just a shell of what it was and all this harsh language and he was like, you know, you're not going to like what you did anymore. You're going to figure out you did the wrong thing. And then he was like, yeah, all right, now do whatever you want. And he just left him. <laughs> yeah, and the and thing is, the way Ralph sounded, I'm not sure if this is the case. Okay, I'm just speaking out of suspicions. But based on how Ralph was saying it, it's like he's been through, if not the same thing, something, something very similar. Well, he was. That was his whole character arc mm -hmm. in the beginning. Because he planted evidence, Barry reported him for planting evidence, or Barry caught him planting evidence, and then that's why he hated Barry in the beginning, because he lost his job, because Barry found out he reported he, he had planted evidence. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was basically speaking from his own experience. Like I did it, I felt good about it, and I got caught, and I realized I made a mistake. So don't do the same thing. Um, and it was cool seeing Joe actually not go through with it because he is a good person. But you know, it still added to the fact that everybody was basically just trying to, uh, like, do anything. You know, Iris basically was a half a second away from saying Barry's the Flesh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody just tried to pull out anything to basically try and save him from going to jail. Which then happened, and he's in jail. So, I'm interested to see where the rest of the season goes and what the rest of these bus meta humans have to do with the plan. Because even the show acknowledged that they're like, well, what about these bus meta humans? Like, what the hell is the plan with that? Like, they don't know. We don't know. 
And the only thing I can really say I didn't like about this episode that stood out to me was just again the whole thing with Killer Frost. It's like, is she like the Hulk? Does she have to like trigger Killer Frost to come out? Like, I don't like that. It doesn't make sense with like, you just have ice powers. Why does your ice powers have to be like a split personality that only is able to use your ice powers? Like, <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. But it's like they're no, trying to have it Killer it Frost it in the it show it without getting rid of Kit and Snow. Yeah, it's like this. Funny, it's like I mean, I guess it was kind of a funny moment, but it was just like it's kind the of. The puppies are gonna die because of you. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of stupid because her powers aren't supposed to work like that. <laughs> and if she was, and if they did work like that, just the fact that there was gonna be a nuclear explosion should have been enough. <laughs> they didn't need to add all that extra, like yeah, the puppies are gonna die and all that extra stuff. I mean, I guess it was for comedic value and it was kind of funny, but it just. I don't. I just don't like the way that they're doing Killer Frost personally. But yeah, and I, I, I'm not that pissy about it for the reason that I already know that Killer Frost, and the what's it called. In the comics, she does join the Justice League, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Well, it's not like that she's evil or not evil. It's just the fact that she can't use her powers unless she's in her Killer Frost persona. Which is stupid. Like they're her powers. They're not Killer Frost powers. And then is Killer Frost and like Enchantress, where she takes her over and gives her powers? You know, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Like, like the way that they're treating her powers. It's so stupid and just like, it's like the writers wanted to keep Killer Frost on the show, but didn't know how to keep her and keep Kate and Snow at the same time. And we're just like, fuck it, make up the stupid convoluted way of her having powers. Yeah. But anyway. That's all I uh, really have to say about The Flash. Uh, overall, I liked the episode. I like, probably liked it the most out of the three mid-season premieres, and I'm really interested to see where it goes. What about you? Any uh, last opinions or discussion topics on it? Any last opinions or discussion topics regarding The Flash? Flash? Not really, no. Not really. Like... I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to bring back Jay Garrick and what's her name? Jesse Chambers and what's his name again? Jesse Quick. Uh, Kid Flash. I forgot, I Wally West. I can't believe I forgot the guy's name. I'm losing <laughs> it. You're losing your mind. Yeah, yeah Wally yeah. West. Also, appa Jesse Quick. apparently he's showing up on two episodes of Legends of Tomorrow as well, so there's a lot of interesting things that could happen. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm excited for whenever, whenever that comes next month. <laughs> Yeah, so I have like, to wait well, a long first time. Jeff, first John Constantine and then this. Find me up. Which is why Legends will probably be my favorite when it comes back, but we'll see. Yeah, we we'll got to wait until February for that. Ugh, we'll see. So now, so now we have the arrow to talk about. Um, it has certain aspects here and there that I liked, which is them showing off more of the villains, them showing more of like basically not having the team be reunited again after their whole fallout and before the season ended which I still think was like avoidable but if they're gonna stick with it they're actually like sticking with it for now which is cool at least they're not flip-flopping on all of their ideas like they wanna stick with the teams being split up which again I think is stupid and was avoidable but you know at least they're making it last for a while to see what's actually gonna happen see what could come out of this um, mm. We had more time with Thea, and I like that because she's a cool character, and she was gone for a while. We had, yep. we had more interaction between Vigilante and Dinah, and her confronting him about working with, um, what's his name, uh, Caden James. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm still not sold on Caden James as a good villain. I'm really not. Yeah, good. he's okay. Like he's getting there. He's more like a. Yeah. He's more like a. He's more like a villain, like organizer. <laughs> like everyone else is doing the things, and he's just kind of like yeah, and, and doing the, the high tech he stuff, has and is like not, is practically non-existent. He doesn't have a motivation for what he's doing. It's like the Joker without the charisma or the nuttiness. Yeah, it's like compared to last season when we had Prometheus and his motivations and everything that was driving him and his storyline with Oliver. This season, it doesn't really like feel like that impactful the villain doesn't feel like he has that kind of same drive to really fuck with the main you know, you know like the main protagonist he just mm -hmm. he just wants to 
cause chaos. He just has this plan that nobody knows about. He wants to do something. He, <laughs> to, 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 to quote Guardians of the Galaxy, he has part of a plan. He has part of a plan, exactly. <laughs> He's still yeah, hopefully, it's better, hopefully it's better than 12%. Oh yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, we still don't really know his plan, but we know that you know he is for sure working with all these villain factions. And uh, we saw, oh yeah, we, there was the whole thing with the Bertinelli fellow and the Huntress references, and there was more Batman references in the episode yeah. too. Um, yeah, but the Bertinellis are not gonna show up again, but it's because we're. Yeah, well, this guy kind of died, so... <laughs> kind of died. <laughs> I, I wonder what happened to Helena, but you know, like, um, I was, from what I gathered from this episode, she's still alive, but she's, like, she's keeping, like, low profile. She's not really doing much of anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what they're going to do with her character right now. I don't think they're planning anything right now with her. But, I mean, yeah, overall, and it just kind of blows my mind that, like, Felicity and Curtis, two really smart people, according to the show, couldn't tell that their bunker was bugged for, like, months. <laughs> Until just now, because of this frequency interference that happened, which, like, they didn't really try to explain, like, why something like this didn't happen before, when they were building all kinds of tech down there, or why nobody could notice any kind of bug whatsoever, like, like they're terrible at this man <laughs> very like they had that place bugged and then the and then the Argus place um was also bugged like the place where Lila took them to stay in after their bunker that was also bugged so they're yeah they're pretty terrible at their at being vigilantes <laughs> <laughs> but <I> guess, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um... Vigilante also showed up in this episode and stuff. Okay, you should stop explaining the joke. <laughs> these, these two guys are rubbing off on me. It's pissing me off. <laughs> Curtis is incredibly cringy and Felicity is, like, less cringy. Just uh, a Felicity little bit less. Felicity is getting cringier by the episode, no, man. No, it, it, she's self-aware. It's interesting to me just because there's, like, a league of supervillains, basically. But at the same time, it's yeah, like it feels like, like there's and, too and, many and villains. Yeah, and for once there isn't actually an assassin villain or something, because every, like every Flash season had a speedster, every Arrow one had like a what's it called, an, an assassin. So now they're trying to change things up. With the Flash, it's kind of working. With Arrow, not that. They're trying to make it like a team fight, like Arrow team versus villain team, but. Now they have this whole thing with like the arrow team breaking up, which I guess adds to the danger of the villains, because now mm -hmm. they have less people to you know fight together with. And they also brought up something interesting, which was the fact that the FBI agent could have been getting this information that they've been leaking, that like Kate and James has been leaking to her about Team Arrow, which is where she's been getting her evidence from about Renee and about the whole team. So. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to see. There wasn't too much of the FBI bullshit this episode, which I liked, so we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing really crazy. Yeah, again, like the team is still split up. They tried to reconcile, but they're like, nah, they fam. Work, which, is un which is understandable, considering everything they went through. But at the same time, it's like... I feel like it's still something they could resolve. Like I feel like it's yeah, something it, that it's really arbitrary at the same time. I mean, yeah, like, there's, it, a, there's a big danger to focus on the rise and the fact that you know these people were able to split you up in the first place. So why don't you guys put aside the differences, beat them up, and then split up or something? Or like at least try and talk it out for more than like a couple of minutes. You know, like like sit down, discuss the pros and cons of joining back together set some boundaries or rules if you're worried about trust issues and decide like okay we're gonna work together for the greater good and then we're gonna figure out our team problem because mm -hmm. as far as they know none of them are on the side of Kate and James or the villains <laughs> because why would they be 
Exactly. So as far as they know, everyone is trustworthy in that regard. So it doesn't really make sense that they're still like not on the same team. Especially when Curtis is still helping the main team by helping John Diggle with his arm thing. Which we finally saw get resolved. So, yeah. again, it's like... Well, probably need EMP to get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. But it's still like... It just seems like they're still like fighting for the sake of not resolving this issue in one episode. Because Which with the other shows, the reason why the issue wasn't resolved in one episode makes sense. In this show, it's like, okay, it makes sense to a certain extent why they're still fighting and they're still not together as a team. But also at the same time, like, they know this was the plan of the villains. And they know that them doing this means the villains' plan is working. And out of spite to the villains, they should get back together as a team, but they're not. So, <laughs> it's like yeah, they're I handing him the victory in his hands. They're yeah. like, here you go, here's the W, here's the win. <laughs> yeah, so they give me the impression that they have like some kind of air-cooled brain or something. Yeah, so that's something we'll have to wait and see where that goes. But, yeah, that's all I really Frankly, have to say I'm about that really episode. Frankly, I'm not really holding that hope, so I'm just like, whatever. Yeah, like Arrow so far just keeps showing itself to be the weaker episode, like the weaker show. Unfortunately. Which is unfortunate because it's the show that started this whole thing and was, you know, one of the best for a long time. I mean, if, when it was the, the only uh, one that was obviously the best, but. Fir first two seasons <laughs> were godlike. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Season three started to go down, season four killed the show. Season five was good. And then now season six is kind of like in between. I'm not gonna say it's bad yet, because we haven't, Cause we haven't seen, the seen the end. Exactly, we haven't seen how this plays out. And to be fair, we're only at episode ten. It's not yeah. technically, technically the middle of the season yet because it's 23 episodes. But you know, we're almost yeah. there. We're almost there. So, yeah. So that's basically, um, that's basically all three shows. You know, as we said, Legends comes back. Um, yeah, in quite some time. Feb so February. February. So we have to wait till that. We will not be covering Black Lightning or Titans for now, and we we still might in the future at some point. But for now, we're not. So yeah, yeah let us know in the comments below what you guys thought about these episodes. Yeah. Uh, which one was your favorite? Yeah, which one of these of three? Ahead of time, I will not actually be watching Black Lightning or uh, Titans, so we I probably won't be discussing any of them. That's okay. So let us know in the comments uh, what you guys thought about these mid-season premieres, which one was your favorite. Uh, personally, I would say um, The Flash was my favorite one. Which one was yours? Bashar? Uh, what's it called? Either The Flash or Supergirl, obviously. But if, mean, you, like, if you had to like choose. <laughs> if I had to choose... Nah, it's hard to choose. If, okay. Uh, I might I'm, I might actually just like stick with Supergirl because Supergirl waking up because of her own willpower power from a coma from which she shouldn't even be conscious still makes more sense than the Flash pulling that nonsense with Iris at the end and not roast his <laughs> face literally. <laughs> oh my god. So I'll yeah. give it that. Well, I'll give it that. Yeah, you know, Flash and his speed force powers and temporal zones and all that. Yeah. They defy physics and actual logic, so don't even consider it. Yeah, but that's true. Anyway, so let us know what you guys thought uh, in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you if you made it this far. And we'll be back next week discussing the next episodes. So, yeah, we'll see you guys then. This has been Zell from Geek Paradise Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And this has been Bashar as a friend from across the world. <laughs> yes, thank you for joining us, man. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace. Take care.